How you going guys? Curtis at Cutting Edge Engineering. Tonight we're going to do a video on our revolving tailstock chuck. Been a much uh, commented tool in our arsenal. So tonight we're going to do a video on how it works, pull it apart and show everyone what's inside. It's probably going to surprise a lot of people as to how simple this is. I'm going to disassemble it and put it back together again. So I know there's going to be a lot of comments of people out there saying, why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it that way? Well, at the time, I needed this in a hurry. This was the quickest way I could put this thing together. So this is what I made one night when I needed it in a hurry. So before we open this thing up and show you what's inside, I'm gonna show you the very first concept of the tailstock chuck. This is the exact chuck I was using at the time. I didn't have a way to hold the piece of tube. I needed a way to grab the inside of it. So I came up with a simple plug suits your live centre perfect fit and then this plug seats into the back of the chuck and I use the live centre to support the chuck That was my very first tailstock chuck. So the basic parts of this is the Morse 5 arbor, the backing plate, and the three-jaw chuck. It's also a four-jaw chuck that attaches to this once you remove the three-jaw. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it apart. So at the moment we're gonna remove the backing plate from the three-jaw chuck. The bolts that mount the four-jaw chuck to the machine also act as a way to remove the three-jaw chuck from the backing plate. So now the three-jaw chuck's removed, let's put that aside out of the road. This is the backing plate and the front of the bearing system. This is the first time this has been apart since it was built three years ago. The way we've actually sealed the bearings from the inside so they don't get any squaw for any sort of dirt or dust in them, it's an O-ring on top of that thrust plate that I've machined a groove into. Set an O-ring in and that fits nice and snug down inside this bore. So we're just going to remove this retaining plate which holds in the bearings. And it's also the thrust plate which puts the pressure onto the bearings. Inside the housing is a tapered roller bearing and just a standard seal, standard lip seal. Behind the tapered roller bearing is a bearing cup identical to that one there. Wipe a bit of that grease out. Nothing too amazing. These are just two tapered roller bearings that I picked up from my local supplier. So where this actually came about is one night I needed a way to hold a large piece of tube, pipe, cylinder tube. Needed something in a hurry. Everything I have here, I had here in the workshop and I turned it up that night. 
that was just a piece of 75 mil round plate I had in the container. That's just a piece of 50 mil 4140. The bearings I had in stock from a previous job. The chucks I already owned. And this was one night of, I don't know how I'm gonna hold it, but this is what I'm gonna try and do. I'm gonna put this one back together. I'm not gonna pull the rear bearing out because I could potentially damage that seal. I don't have a spare one. So we're just gonna put this back together again as if I was never in here. I'm gonna put the arbor back into the backing plate. Very neat fit. Seat the seal again. Reinstall the front bearing. Then we're just going to put the thrust what the the thrust washer back on. So this thrust washer has a slight little step machined into it to set the preload on the bearings, and then it's all just tightened up with one bolt. What we're going to do now, we're going to actually install the four jaw chuck onto the backing plate. So they are aligned by this shoulder. Both chucks have the same shoulder on it. And that's it, now you've got a four jaw on it. So as it goes for Costa to build something like this, there is a few hours work in it. That is a Morse 5, which suits the TM26120G uh, behind me. We do have this in a Morse 6 and a Morse 4, one for the small machine, one for our larger machine. We do run three and four jaw chucks on all of them. That was a bit of 50 mil 4140 I had in stock off an old job. The bearings I think were about $30 each. I think the seal was $8. The chucks are probably your most expensive part. That chuck was $280. That's a good quality vertex chuck where the four jaw is a cheaper tool master. Nowhere near as good a quality as the vertex but I don't use it very often and I wasn't able to get a four jaw vertex in the same size. So when you're buying chucks for something like this, always try to stay above the cheap mark. I run a vertex three jaw self-centering chuck uh, for a lot of my machining when it comes to barrel work or large rods, that's something that's unusual to hang on to. You may not have a centering cone or the end of the tube's not cut straight or it's just an, a terrible part to try and set up in a steady find a centre. Using a three jaw, especially on a bit of rod or a bit of tube, is a lot easier. You do come across those jobs that are a nightmare to set up regardless what you've got and that's where the four jaw comes in handy. You can move the jaws around until you get the part in alignment where you can put either a steady on it, generally just make life a lot easier. The beauty part of the three jaw, you can run the internal or the external jaws. If you're holding on a small or large diameter parts, you can even put them down inside something if you need to. I commonly use the outside jaws for going down into a bit of unhoned tube to find a closest center as possible. Being that it is unhoned tube, the ID is not exactly machine true. So you might have to turn the, turn the chuck reset it, turn it again, turn it again until you find as close to center as you can possibly get it. Then you can machine it on a steady band, set up your steady and go from there. 
So some of the applications we've used this in is some really large cylinder barrels. big rods. If you want to see any of the footage of what we use this for mainly, go back and check some of our videos out. So any shot made tool, such as a revolving tailstock chuck, is at your own risk. Uh, if you don't build it correctly, it could potentially fail. If there's enough interest in this particular shot made tool and how it's made, uh, certain parts of it, or you want to see one built from start to finish, leave us a comment and we'll, we might do a video one night on actually making one from start to finish. And there you have it, revolving tailstock chuck. So we're looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> looking down here. <laughs> Tonight we're going to do a bit of a video on our live fuck. So as I said in the start of the video, what did I say in the start of the video? <laughs> it's on you. Don't fuck it up. What should I say? Fuck, what were we gonna say? <laughs> Fucking lost it. Fucking gone. <laughs> What's it say? Fuck. And you wanna see one made? Uh, put some comments down in the com. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Start again. <laughs> okay. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, now look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs>